Good morning, everybody. We have a tech rehearsal today for the Christmas concert on Saturday, so we are setting up the mayhem. Lena's running in circles. Costumes and props everywhere. It's chaos, I'm very tired, but excited for our rehearsal. We're about to have sound check. Well, Rachel's here because Rachel, you can be in my pantry, whatever you want. Rachel's here. We match sister merch town. I still haven't received yours yet. Where are yours? I know they for some reason. I like, ordered it the day it came out, girl. They were like, we ship eight to ten days after you ordered it. I'm like, I feel like my merch has been out for weeks. Anyway, another story. That happened Hi. to me too. There's some people who got it like the next day, and there's some people who didn't get it for months. So who knows? Anyway, hello guys. So I just came up with a brilliant idea. Oh god, what is so it? So if you're a person who makes things, make this. Yeah. And give me 10%. Oh, an I'm inventor. An inventor. <laughs> no, I'm fine. the inventor. I need scientists to put it together. I need an engineer. Yeah. Okay. So I think there should be a scale, like a weight scale, mm -hmm. that every time you get on it tells you that you're amazing in some different way. Dang, girl, you look so effing good. Oh, instead of a number pops up, it I mean, just maybe, says maybe a it tells you your weight too, because you want it to be functional. Uh -huh. so it can tell you your weight too. 179 and looking real fine. If you want, you can choose. <laughs> but I think it'd be so good because yeah, that's cute. every person like has to get on a scale, not has to, but like a lot of people get on a scale and it's like, you kind of dread it. Sometimes it's, it's exciting if the numbers go down, but sometimes the numbers go up and our society has taught us that that's something to be sad about, even though it's not. I think it'd be so cool if there's a scale that you get on and it's like, you look hot. <laughs> Are you get on a scale yeah. and it's like, oh, you today, honey. Oh, you're so you're stunning. Like every day, it says something different to you. So like it auto says it. Like audio yeah. thought like. It but works. you can choose. You can program it how you want. But isn't that a good idea? Because it's I was wonderful. thinking about like presents for people, and I was like thinking how I need a new scale. And I was like, oh, you know, what? maybe mom would want a scale. And I was like, but mom's always so concerned about that, which she doesn't need to be and shouldn't be. Yeah. She's always like, I have to lose five pounds. I have to lose ten pounds. I have to lose twenty pounds. I have to lose five pounds. Like she's always talking about that. Yeah. yeah. Even though she doesn't, she's perfect. But I was like, I wish there was a scale I could give my mom that just when she got on it, it was just like, you look so beautiful. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. I. That's sh so much should have been. And so I looked it up because I was like, this must exist. Yeah. Like it's 2020, we're all like about empowering each other and like building each other up. And the only one I could find that does that, because there is one that does that, is you program in the weight you want to be. And if you don't lose weight, it's mean to you. <gasps> and it encourages you if you lose weight. It's like, good job, you're doing great, you look beautiful if you're losing weight. But if you gain weight, it's sassy and mean. That that's is the only one I could find. I was like, how is this real? Terrible. So I mean, some people might like that, but like, no! I don't think that's good. But I think that should exist. I think that should be a that scale because I don't know. I feel like weight is such a triggering topic for so many people, and like with all the eating disorders out there and all that stuff, I feel like it'd be so great to have a way that you can be weighing yourself if you want to, but not feel bad about yourself doing it. Yeah. That like even if you've gained a couple pounds, it's just like, oh, you look gorgeous. I'm living for your body. Like you get those curves, girl. Or uh, yeah. Also. Scales don't mean anything, just so everyone well, knows. Well, of course they don't, but it's something everyone has. Did you also, have that no, but also don't go to someone and say, you look so healthy. No, don't say that. Stop that. We all know what that's code for. Because that's something everyone said to me when I gained, I gained 70 pounds when I was pregnant. I would be like, oh my gosh, I've gained so much weight. People would be like, it doesn't fit. but you look so healthy. I feel like that's like the new version of telling someone you think they look like they've gained weight. I mean, I get that it's like well, they're trying to not me. Women, some people yeah, just don't comment yes. on people's bodies. Stop it. Don't Stop. comment on people's bodies. Hey, men, hoo We gotta do a tech. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's been a stressful day. <laughs> Um, you guys might not be getting a vlog today because we're stressfully trying to get this done. That soundtrack did not go well. Now Corey's running to the store to do a pickup of some other cords and cables to try to make things work. We're trying to get like the audio, because I have a microphone, we're trying to get like the tracks and the microphone to be picked up and it's just not working. So we're trying to sort it all out. But Flynn's helping me, huh buddy? Are you helping me out? Yeah! So we brought out the big, massive computer, hoping that it has more oomph to it that can help us. I'm doing a whole new setup. So that's what I'm working on now. It's quite a day. But Flynn's working hard on the computer. You working hard on the computer? Good boy. Very nice work. Gotta send an email. 
All right. <sighs> there is a lot to do, but Flynn insisted on digging right now in the dirt. He's got his excavator and a pile of dirt. I've got my papers and things that I can start sketching out one of the props for. So we're both getting our stuff done. He's got important work to do, and I've got important work to do. Huh, Flynn? It has been quite the day. I think it's time for some jumping. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Guys, it is like 7.30 and we, <laughs> we started setting up for tech at like 9.30, 10 a.m. and we just finished. That's how long it took. So, Flynn has been very patient today throughout the sound checks and everything. We just ordered Chinese food because it's a Chinese food type of night. And it's time for some jumping! What are you doing? Hey, I smell something stinky. Is that you? Well, the jumping didn't last long, but I'm gonna eat some food, so it's fine. Where'd Daddy go, Flynn? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Okay, bye bye. <laughs> hey everyone, so um, I just did my hair and makeup and it's 11 p.m. because <laughs> I need to film a video. Um, the video I've been filming kind of all week for my childhood cancer fundraiser. Uh, I need to film like the intro and outro and all that stuff to it. So I need to film that in a second, but obviously I didn't film too much today. And that's because we were just so busy. I mean, literally from the moment I woke up this morning until now has been just, we were teching all day and Corey was running back and forth trying to get the, like the cords and cables and boxes and things that we needed and then making props and rehearsing and just like everything. I'm really excited for the show, but it was just like a lot. But I do have some footage to share with you guys that I, oh, okay, so I filmed this last night and this is a hard thing to watch. If you don't like hard things to watch, don't continue watching. <laughs> I filmed something last night and I was gonna put it in my vlog yesterday and then I didn't because I was a wreck. Whenever I do these fundraisers, like I'm always so excited to do them and they make me really happy and I love getting to know the kids that I gotten to meet, like who battle cancer, who have battled cancer, who bought, who beat cancer, who are currently fighting cancer. I love meeting and getting to know them because they're so incredibly inspirational and amazing and just, I love it. I, I love every part of it and I love doing anything and everything I can to help them and ins and encourage you guys to help them and and so I enjoy it. And there's a side to it though that's hard. That hard part hit me last night and I was a wreck. And I didn't end up putting it in the video yesterday because I don't, for a couple reasons. One, I didn't want anyone thinking that I was like, oh my God, this is so hard for me. My heart was just aching and breaking for the families who have to go through something so challenging with a child. Like a child should never have to go through that. So um, I was just having a hard night and and I just was a total mess. But I also didn't want people to think like doing these fundraisers or doing good deeds and help and working to find a cure. I didn't want people to think all of those things equals like devastation and tears because it doesn't. It brings me so much joy and it makes me so happy. And I've grown to love and become friends with so many incredible people because of the work that I've gotten to do um, for childhood cancer. So like, I also didn't want anyone to watch the footage last night and be like, oh, well, you know, if you want to help people with cancer, then like, this is what it might do. It might make you just like break down and sob like this. Like, I don't know if I want to do that. So I didn't want to discourage anyone either. So that's, that's why, but I was thinking about it 
today and I thought, you know what, I want people to see this because I want people to see how heartbreaking this can be. And that is why we all need to work together to make a difference. And that is why it is so important that people come and join the fundraiser and either spread awareness or donate or just learn more and just educate yourself a little bit more. Like that's even helpful. Anything you can do is important. But I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. But in the meantime, here is my night last night. So enjoy. Hola kids. So I always forget, I always forget how hard this week is. I'm so excited for the fundraiser this weekend and I'm so excited for the performance. Like the Christmas concert on Saturday is truly just like a Christmas concert. It's silly, it's comedy, it's fun. It's just a silly Christmas concert. I just happen to be donating all the money to childhood cancer and then sunday is the fundraiser we'll talk about childhood cancer and we'll raise money together and i'll give away prizes and all that fun stuff but um i obviously like all year i'm like aware of childhood cancer and like donate time and money when i can and um reach out to kids going through cancer and stuff randomly throughout the year but like obviously when i'm getting ready for the fundraiser it's always I have to focus on it a lot and I, I get to focus on it a lot. It's wonderful because I get to learn so much. I was just editing the video that I wanna post because I've obviously been talking to different people who've experienced cancer and hearing their stories. And when I'm talking to them, you know, we're just chatting and it's like, I'm composed and everything is good, but now editing it, I don't, you know, I don't feel the need to be composed in like in that moment with that person. I'm just listening to what these kids are saying. <laughs> So I talked to um, Sky's mom and sister. Sky is a girl I met on my birthday last year. Sky passed away at the beginning of this year. And then I talked to a mom who was a little girl with cancer. And you know, they're in the thick of it. And um, then I talked to this amazing girl, Mia, who's in remission, which is so awesome. I just wanted to get like a range of different experiences and different stories. And then obviously I know a lot of different kids with cancer who beat it who are still fighting it and people we've lost to it but like every year when we get to this uh fundraiser i usually try really hard to like not show this side of it as much but this year has obviously been a different year i've been vlogging every day you guys kind of see everything i go through and this is what i'm going through and it's not me i'm not saying like i'm going through this it's i'm feeling so deeply for the people who are going through this it feels just so unfair and I feel like I'm all over the place but I just the overwhelming thing that I have felt talking to different people this week and researching and remembering things that people have said to me in the past about it all is like one there's just not enough funding and research for these kids there's just not like you might think like obviously there's got to be a lot of funding for childhood cancer like it's kids with cancer but there's really not that's the one of the one of the biggest things I felt talking to the parents especially and just knowing what I know from over the years like that's always been like overwhelming frustration and uh, like a need it's just like we need help like there's no research for these types of cancers and there's no funding for these kids so that's like one of the reasons I'm like so passionate about this another thing that everyone has said is just like being there for them so it's not just about the funding but just knowing people are there for them and knowing that like people want to help and just feel community and like love and support is like so important to these people so to anyone who's been sharing the fundraiser talking about it thank you so much if you know someone with cancer like it doesn't have to be a kid with cancer cancer sucks no matter how old you are just be there for that person and love on them and it just seems like that's what the those are the repetitive things I keep hearing and thinking about and reading about one of my best friends from my hometown she's a really good friend who lost her baby to cancer last year so I went on her Instagram just like see how she's doing and what she's up to and she just made this post about her son Aiden who she lost last year but I want to read it to you guys so she posted a picture of Aiden and she said oh Aiden like footprints in concrete the imprint you made on my life will last forever I run my fingers along my shoulder and feel the groove of where your head should still be The crook of my left arm gets cold without you in it. I miss everything about you, from your mischievous nature to the smell of your skin. In the moment right before I wake up, sometimes I forget you're gone. 
Those are the hardest mornings to get out of bed. The weight of losing you is too heavy to move. I scroll through my pictures, seeing how loved you feel and how happy you are to be part of our family. I'm able to pull the covers back up and put my feet on the ground. I begin another day without you on earth. I hope you are happy. I hope Grandma Kathy and Grandpa Tommy and Oliver are spoiling you rotten in heaven. Until I can hold you in my arms again, I'll be holding you in my heart. Love you forever, Mama. And then she said, Lots of things make me cry these days, but what gets me the most is how nice people are. I read two words of a beautiful message from one of you and I lose it. Please keep them coming. These tears help to fill the hole in my heart. We feel so loved and we cannot thank you enough. <sighs> it hits, you know, I've been doing this fundraiser for many years it obviously hits a lot harder now that I have a son of my own. My heart shatters when I hear these stories and it just makes me want to do more to help. I do feel guilty every time I feel like sad or upset or angry or anything over something small knowing that people are going through hard things like this. But then as I was editing, one of the girls I talked to, Mia, she was diagnosed with cancer when she was six and then it came back. Later, she's now 12. While we were talking on Zoom, she said to me, you know, I, I was saying, thank you so much for inspiring me. You're so amazing. And just talking about how wonderful she is. And she said to me, like, thank you, like, for your vlogs. Like, when you were going through hard things, it was really nice to know that I wasn't alone going through something hard. Now, I don't know how she could compare <laughs> what she was going through to me being sad about something stupid in a vlog. <laughs> it doesn't compare at all it's not even close to the same but i think it was like an important lesson for me to hear and learn from a 12 year old <laughs> yeah people go through hard things all different kinds of hard things it's important to just like be there for each other let each other know like you're not alone in whatever that hard thing is because when things get really hard and really dark no matter how dark or how hard or how not so hard <laughs> things are can be, it's easy for us to think like, I'm all alone and no one knows what this feels like and how am I gonna get through this? Just to know someone else is going through something hard too sometimes is all you need or sometimes just hearing someone say like, I'm here for you is all you need and it's obviously not even close, not even comparable to a smidgen of a degree of the things that I am, you know, reading about and hearing about and thinking about 24 seven right now with all these kids and cancer. But I so often get in my head when I feel those negative ways and I think, well, this isn't important. Me feeling depressed and sad and really negative about myself is not important. Like, what? why are you feeling that way? How your life is so good? That's not important. Mia, this 12 year old, made me realize the reason it's important is because someone like Mia could be in the hospital alone and scared and see me going, just being sad and be like, I'm having a hard day. This sucks. And it might make her go like, oh, I'm not alone. Today's a hard day for me too. Ugh. Eric just came in and gave me hugs and talked to me for a while. So what I was saying is that I think it's important for us to just express how we're feeling and let each other know that like we all go through hard times and that we're not alone. Not that all hard times are the same. Me waking up in a grumpy mood is not the same as um, someone battling cancer, but <laughs> Mia saying that to me just made me go, oh my God, like, yeah, I think we all just want to know that someone else is there and that we're not alone. It's just hard like hearing these stories of these people and like getting to know them on a personal level, becoming friends with them and their families and knowing the pain that they're going through and seeing what people focus on in the world. Like I see the internet do so uh, much nastiness over petty drama and cancel this person because they did this rude thing I don't like or cancel this person because of this thing and that thing and let's all bully and gang up on these people and like just millions and millions of people will rally together to bully and cancel someone online. I just wish the energy, all that energy could be focused on doing something good. Like I feel like the world would just change. But that's not how the world works. But that's okay because there are so many good people out there. I know because I've seen it because I'm watching you guys raise money. People are donating $10 who are like, this is all I have. All I have is $10, but I'm gonna donate it. Like, thank you. People saying like, I don't have any money to spare, but like, I'll share this all over with anyone and everyone that I can. Or I've had people write me letters saying like, I couldn't donate to your 
fundraiser, but you inspired me to start a childhood cancer awareness club at my school, you know? There are good people out there, and I just want to say thank you to the good people who are doing their part to make this world a better place, whether it's helping with this fundraiser or some other place that you like to donate to or help out with, like, just thank you. Don't let my tears make you think that, like, I'm like just so sad and scared or stressed of this weekend. I'm so excited for the fundraiser. The fundraiser is always fun. It's never this. <laughs> the fundraiser is always fun and we smile and laugh and give away prizes and and the Christmas concert is a goofy, ridiculous comedy musical show. Like it's not this. This is just the behind the scenes that you guys are getting to see because it's an exciting and fun thing to be able to help people. But sometimes it's hard to understand the truth behind at all, if that makes sense. I don't know. I'm very tired. I need to go to bed. I love you guys. Thanks for listening to me rant for a while and cry. I love y'all. I'll see you guys.